Five judges will score all 12 points. The top six scores will go through for the second round. So if we have a tie for six and seven or six, seven, and eight, that number will go through. Each of the poets through to round two will perform again, and that will be written down to three, and that three then will uh, perform one final time. Spider monkey. <laughs> This is a poem celebrating the love of loving as personified free dancing. When music takes over our thinking and our bodies to the talking, we channel ancient teaching, preaching love with rhythm, dancing's wisdom, its mother nature moving as emotion, sowing seasons and with her blessings, we can change the show we're seeing. Any cold, lonely evening seeping through our being, we can beat them. Oh, we can heat them. We've got infinite strands of breathing, moving in rhythm of their dancing. This is Mother Nature's blessings. This is where believing feels our friends be amazing. A fine shine of loving. We're dancing with passions, juggling joy. We're laughing, loving every moment, loving every movement, loving the enjoyment we exist in. I integrate the force of feeling free in its blissful source of dancing. Glee, do it with me. Smile deep. Be free, live larger than seas, give, always receive love. That's a rhythm of ease, a magical state with release to seal the real peace deep from now until the end. Befriended by ascended legends of dancing arrangements, assist us commitment, advance our ascension, and dance different. white blind and the wild things that creep, 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 creep. And we take for granted its emptiness, for there are no heartbeats that echo through its halls, no voices that echo through its walls, no sweat, no breathless gas shared in its bed. Oh, yes! This house is empty, isn't it? Because I can't help but stop the feeling that one of these days, not so long from now, the door of the heights that we all think is empty, it's going to crash open with a bang that is heard throughout the world and there she'll be. A woman standing on the steps of the heights that we all thought was empty. And she looks like someone I know. <coughs> who do I look like? She'll scream. Well, who do I look like? And then to laugh, the kind of laugh that reverberates through our blood, bringing us back the baseline animal with no future and no history. And then she's going to turn and slam the door. And we'll never see her again. But right before she disappears, 
I realized who she looked like. To that woman, she looked like me. The height at the end of my street is empty. And I hope to God I'm right. Thank you. Marion Lovett. But actually, I was educated by the Presentation Sisters in Tali, Kevji, Harry, so <laughs> this one's for my mother. It's called Portrait. I forgot to take a picture of my mother as she lay dying. Often in the long, drawn out weeks, I held her hands in mine. Who were limp and wrinkled, blemished with brown spots, nails brittle, fingers gnarled, the knuckles swollen like tree knots. Her touch was just the same as when she twirled the hair of childish me, stroked my cheek, or placed her hands protectively upon my shoulders. The day we stood together with the bishop for the confirmation photo. Those hands held us, held together our whole world. Thank you. Margaret Kilcoy. This is a piece called Samhain, and I would like to dedicate it to Vicky Phelan. Down the hollow, down the glen, in this salacious world of men, night lights bracken in memory, celebration, regeneration of the well that was, it is, and never ceases, and the crease-lipped costumes bleed into the fire at night. Such color. Such murmuration as we pause to see, to think, to believe in something that we do not yet know. The doula, she knows. Her mouth is ready to speak, to open the beak of Morrigan, perfectly posed to turn the night inside out despite its henchmen. These weanling pains. Wounds that move as quick as bogs. Waves of women whitewash the shore with words. Ink no match for blood. Mouths are wide for the eye. Thank you. Milan Don. To be around town most days. Conniving in the sky of the next day, striding along, singing a song, and my chemical induced haze. I'd be around town most days. In the sun, having fun with the best of body, our fingers, and the moon cast out and passed out in this town that doesn't take in strays. I'd be around town most days. Sipping from flagons of broken dreams, what could have been, and memories of the far things seemed to come apart at the seams. I'd be around town most days. Sitting broken and smoking alone with nothing but the scars of pain and only a gansey on deck that when the pistons are rain. They find people like me dead on the ground most days. Because to you it might seem strange, a stranger asks if I nothing but a bit of change. In this country of broken systems and closed doors and people sleeping out on empty floors. I'd be around town most days. People forget that this won't go away. And these invisible children are still here to stay until the cycle is fixed. 
won't cure itself and shall continue to exist. So don't sit there and tell me that things are going wrong. Because homeless are people too that just need a hand. How we turn things around someday? Yeah. <laughs> Lauren McNamara. Blank mails. Jimmy was a blank mail, doing what a blank mail does, following and looking and seeing and being and figuring out what he wants and what he needs. His hands are soft. He doesn't want people to know that. He has to do something to prove that he's tough, so he fights, he screams, and he calls his mama whore, and he feels he needs to do this because he's dad in there to do it no more. He hits his knuckles off the wall, and fuck yeah, they get sore. And he just does it some more and some more and some more and some more. So then his hands won't be soft. At school, Jimmy sometimes tried. But he didn't really care enough about anything. His teachers told him again and again, you supply yourself, Jimmy, you can do anything you want. And that's with his head. He really had to leave, so he left. Alone. Somewhat. And he went back home. A handle on the door for the sir. Inside an empty chair, an empty table, a blank mail and a blank home. His mother's cigarettes weren't lighting, his TV wasn't playing, no one was screaming, it didn't feel right. Jimmy went to his room. Inside, he met someone new. Charlie used to be a blank mail too. But Charlie doesn't draw a pencil no more. He used a permanent marker. Jimmy was a blank mail. Barry Corbin. A long winded toast to our number one host. Barry Morris, Wordsmiths, Corner of Dishes, Second Sight Optometrists, Back Speed Clinicians, Old of Ireland from near and from far. Welcome to that. Welcome to this. Up into the bazaar of the thornberry farmer, the syntactic snake and serpent charmers, the jacks who sell the family cow or buy the magic beans, impounders of spices, exploders of words, testers of problems and pains of the soul, the Jews who choose to climb upon rather than dig up their knees. Where domestic codges and exotic spices, uncertain virtues, and decided voices. Are displayed while the reticence makes speeches. Speeches that highlight the twilight and dance in the dark where cats me yell and carnival bark. On a back and track to real men in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the bazaar. And we are in debt to the patrons, the sponsors, the impresarios who shelter us homeless with no place to go. To our bewilderness and social isolation. We cultivate the voices and amplify the vocals of Fringe through planting foreigners and alienated locals and let them address this new United Nations. So, on behalf of these poor, impractical phonetic farmers, these syntactic snake and serpent charmers, this alliance of rebels that are short of claws, will find our times and flaunt our failings and will chain ourselves to our own wailings. I can't but offer my thanks and applaud. Your thoughts. Thank you. Marguerite Quinlan. Mine acquired may hurt 
may ache our nerves may great may angst ignite lose sight of footing as frost bites treading water in the dark lands the boil of fear conditioned habits that inhabit inhibit true nature dance to a new tune, old story heard as new through open-hearted ear, see clear. May bridge a mile. Thomas Fitzgerald. Her lilt in Kerry Call rises to the ceiling to rouse her peacefully sleeping children on another weekday winter morning and they wake in the still suburban darkness to the smell of toast cooking and their hot breaths puffing like old ghosts in the cold bedroom before them. Ayyalup! She shouts again, then gets the table set for the three separate breakfast. It's warm milk, we'd have still for the eldest. Rice Krispies, toast and tea respectively for kids two and three. She's moving fast. She's thinking about gas and electricity. Her nails are worried daily down past the cubicles, wondering how she's going to pay all these stupid bills. Young know, the son just started secondary school. Shoes to buy, copy books to fill. Middle son needs money for some football trip, but how's she going to fund it though? She never leaves the heat on too long. She collects Super Queen coupons. It's baths once a week after Glen Rose. Sure, she barely knows her own husband. They only see each other at night, but this is just modern life. Now she's flicking on the blinding bedroom light. Hey, y'all, up, hurry up, get dressed, you're gonna be late. She makes sure they eat and have their teeth brushed and rushes them out the gate to beat the morning rush. She gets stuck in traffic, she drops them off. She grabs her trolley, does a weekly shop. She gets home, puts on a wash, keeps one eye on the clock, and then it's back to school to pick them all up. And now the washing has to be hung, then the ironing must be done. There's still that dinner left to cook. She has to finish her housework and then help them with her homework. She's always tired, her bones hurt. She doesn't know her own work like gravity nobody pays her any heed so suddenly they float alone on this cold earth and then they know oh so something's been holding my soul close saying she shouldn't be living in this big house on her own but don't they know she has diffused herself into every corner of every room in this home she gave them every grain of her time held them close while they cried and she can't lie and say it wasn't a sacrifice but she would do it all again if they asked her to this voice when she died, they sold the house. They never knew the house. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Pridham. Now before I say what I'm about to say, I'll need signatures on these NDAs. I'm trusting you with a disclosure. We're seeing an image I've carefully doctored. My deep dark secret is, I am from Kerry. <laughs> I know, it's hard to believe. I carry a large bag with all of my discarded parts, the heavy rays, muttering, <laughs> muttering inside about drink driving and denying climate change. In his own words, sure God will find a way. <laughs> but those brothers know how to whip votes, promising to fix potholes, Harry's form of activism. <laughs> I remember my grandmother getting political after the bacon and cabbage. Do you know the difference between a box of bags and the roads? You'll find tar in the fags. <laughs> As I lay splayed in my social faux pas, I begin to think about the wilds of my land. I am a man of the elements, a blessing and a curse, 
a wild-eyed Celtic fairy, Fort Queen, Maidling, Slade, Shale, under my left eye, limestone ponds, spring water tears. <laughs> I fear I am beautiful. Monsieur Cartographe, paint me like one of your French bulldogs. <laughs> Fill the quarry into my heart, you will find chasms of loving carry people. Drill into my belly button, you will find fairy forts, another world in an enclosed space. Cross me or my fairies and we'll bog burst the worst soil creep nightmares all over your Millennials, unite! Time to face the fixed rate, fixed term realities of your 30s. Those bills won't pay themselves. They're very prosperous to play upon your mind while you toss and turn at night trying to fight them into non existence. Roll over, go to sleep. Roll over, go to sleep. It happens to us all. Roll over, go to sleep. I will get there eventually. Eyes wet, haven't slept, but the nightmare keeps pervading. Matchsticks holding my eyes open so that all I could do a Dolly Parton or a Karl Marx and start a revolution. If I had just a notion or a motivation to have a care in this world, form a union, this it's to help with this push. And double under the pressure of fiscal matter. Max crack can't relax until we decide if we heat up our lives or feed our child, we're at the bottom of this pile. Topped by morons intent on building back better, led by donkeys. Have they seen this weather? This economic forecast is floored and so discord amongst the poorest. What kind of meters we have us ignore this fact? They distract from their inadequacy, don't need prophecy to see where this is going. But maybe there's no sense in apportioning blame. The name just gets changed, the volume of pain unimpacted, truth's been redacted, lost all meaning. This pyramid scheme will have me disagree. But the best things in life are free. Or at least they should be. Kieran McCarthy. That's not, uh, it's called the Wild Threat. To think that we won't have for you would be a grave mistake. That we'll suffer all your losses while you take and take and take. That we'll go quietly into the night as you inject stress into our days. Attempt to shade a piercing light and manipulate our ways. To your idle threats and schemes consider us unfazed. That your ideals could corrupt us, that our third eye will blaze. That you could project manage our best instincts into only what pays. And we won't see you scamper out the back door through your smoke screen haze. I hope to give you the time of day that our patience allows. That we maintain the peace of a second slap cheek that you make 95 from stacks of 9 to 5 weeks. But I can promise nothing, and for you I cannot speak. Just know that choices made in freedom from prosperity's peak will be remembered when you're desperate and cited when you're weak. When revenge receives occasion and with the grace not to take, and your pain needs no persuasion, maybe then you will awake to see that we could work together for our mutual sake. But if you go any further up, we can only go down. And for all your time spent seeing straight, you have failed to look around. To see beneath your high fence borders, there lies common ground. May you engage with your humanity and humility be found. 
and give thanks that this land is above water because otherwise you'd drown. We're going to do this like it's 12 o'clock at a wedding. They're going to make it. They're going to make a tunnel and pierce it from the wall. That's not going to happen. Ed's just giving me the filthiest look ever. Ed's just looked at you as if Cork actually beat Limerick in the last all I time. And he's going to last the clock completely. So is it just you going up there to the fight? Is it just all you? I'll see that. Give me a round of applause on the hill. And, and can I just say, don't come back to me if you're pretty, pretty shit on any of the fucking, um, I was pissed at. No. Ladies and gentlemen, I was there when she won the All Ireland Final in 2019 in Dublin. I was there when she won the Monster Society the same year. You're in for a treat. Massive round of applause. For the All Ireland Sand Hall to Jackie and his show in the week. I just wanted a chance to look like I won. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, it's great to be here. Um, as Stan said, I won in 2019, so I was the winner for 2020 and onward. And uh, <laughs> after winning the competition, I got to perform places that I never even imagined I'd be performing, like my kitchen, and uh, my sitting room, and my bathroom, and so I think. Um, but it was some weird times, right? And um, lots of people got into baking, but it kept the um, so they go on to that. Um, I like lots of other people got really into anxiety. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a lot of my time. But I did find some things that kind of helped with that, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this poem. And it's called PMA, which means Positive Mental Action. <laughs> I tried to have a PMA, but I just said PMS. The platitude of gratitude seemed a bit far-fetched, wrecked, exhausted, nihilistic and melancholic. I couldn't escape the panic. So, half mad and half desperate, I opted into the sacred. And to my amazement, it wasn't long before I felt an improvement. Felt like a mad old flower talking to a higher power and a cuckoo queen asking angels to intervene. But I mean, we've circled around these themes for eons, so I deem maybe there is something else going on, more than meets the eye. Not a bearded guy up in the sky, but something more universal, like an acknowledging the spirit in one another. Look to the person next to you. <laughs> <laughs> They were once just an embryo too. Now they're a full grown person with assertions, aspirations. That in itself is absolutely mental. So why are we so quick to disregard the transcendental? Oh no, not I. Oh no, not I. Not this chick. Now I say, ooh, sexy psychics. I'll give you all my money, bring my aura, do my tarot cards, and I'll come out buzzing. All you naysayers, say what you want, charlatans, who gives a fuck? If it makes me feel better, I'll give them all my tenors. This divination got me feeling so centered and connected. I don my jade, garnet, and ivy. So many crystals, they'll see me from space. <laughs> I trigger men all over the place. Talk of magic till we're blue in the face. Giving in salt baths, betting bowls, essential oils, get in my zone. Feel my chakras, get them aligned. Oh yeah, the tippy life is sure damn fine. So, shaman me up, baby. Activate my kundalini, vibrate at a real high frequency. Yogi poses got me feeling alive. Prana on my mind. Energy healers are the new drug dealers, so get in line. <laughs> Maybe I am in denial. It's fine for me to say, just change your perspective. A person of relative privilege, as if it's that easy. Not to propose you forgo medication and therapy to go hug trees and pray to goddesses, but it is my hypothesis that the existential dread can't get you down with your real end out with your head in the towel, so why the heck not? <laughs> Hack that matrix to get your kicks, tweak beliefs for more mystique. 
Meditate to the metaphysical to quit being so cynical using all the tools at your disposal. But it's hard. It's all hard. So what harm a few charms and spells helps to dispel the pessimism? We're on the cusp of a major pinnacle, for better or worse. So if the woo-woo works it up to fuck, it sure needs to be fed up. And if there's solace to be found in believing there's a purpose, then so be it. Now I'm not saying I'm completely cured, I still have days I'm pure allergic, but I feel like I can hope. And I've started to note all the things I'm grateful for, writing them down in a journal. The eventual goal is to rip through a hole in the multiverse and stop equating work to self-worth, but for now, I just say thank you. And you know what? I mean it too. First up is Margaret Point. This is a piece called Solstice, and I would recommend that uh, you come and do it in Sligo because it's magnificent. Solstice. A lathering of light oozing through a crevice sky, conjecture and conjuncture, one more, lightning fast but as gentle as a child's whisper. During this disease in a year that has seemed perpetually black, time to stop. Like supping caps at trough, we beaver through just about enough to realise what we miss. A hug, a breath, a kiss. Like anime lulling to the suck of the sea. These stars are peeping out merry like. For you, for me. Thank you. Leon Dunn. I've been arguing with an older gentleman recently. A discourse of two opposing opinions, I tried my best to be amicably civil. There was one thing that seemed to deem this conversation through as the fact he was a traditional elbow diddle. Not that he was sentimental in the old days, more in a mental sense of homophobic ways, that he had a fear of gays, and others that he seemed to deem different. And for time, this gentleman got a grip on reality, saw his vision of equality was a bit more realistic. And there's differences between us, me and him, him and me, but if you look at his both similarities, you might see white, broken glass, male, straight. When his sword bars the door, our sword helps to open that gate. Because we're all part of a new Ireland. One with a bit more fluidity, a country with a little less fucking negativity towards those brave enough to challenge the norm. Because you are all beautiful and shouldn't have to conform. Thank you. Jim Pritchard. And so this poem is called Straight Pride. And um, I don't know if you heard about this, but in Boston, 2019, they actually approved the Straight Pride Parade. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of like, what's that going to look like? Straight Pride. Every shade of beige will be draped around Boston. <laughs> Don't stop believing in summer of 69, glaring from floats. Grown men dressed in Buzz Lightyear costumes. LGBT activists will get accused of being Westboro Baptists for picketing the Gatsby Pride parody with signs that read, 
When was it illegal for men and women to get married? When did a straight person get jailed for being straight? When did a straight person get put to death for being straight? Oh, my poor repressed majority. <laughs> How have you coped these last 10 years? Are you mad because we've taken rainbows away from my little pony? A note or two for those of you thinking that the boom is back. Patrick Street's a patchwork quilt with all the people sleeping rough and that, and even still there are those hanging tough on crack, hustling this and that, hoping this will pass. You're doing them in the back, those who keep your wallets fat and your plastic tap, but then don't react when those questions asked. Would you get by on half of that so they've the room to swing a cat, trade your duvet for a heavy sack, hey, your fancy that, your fancy little rat. I'd peep your gas and keep it tapped while you have your cheeks intact. Fuck your figures, keep your facts until you have your timbers stacked and get to building social gas. Maintain the social, claim your tax from these faceless corporate hacks and if not, you can expect a rap. Well, and by your shameless acts, digging on their behalf, while your own fall through the cracks. You should hand your passports back, you sit in the chair of seven sacks. Now he died because he had no gaff. His hair was just the first to say, fuck that and fuck you. Think you will stand back as you grease the palms of Uncle Pat and get your cousin Jack a brand new hat with a BAM sticker at the back. Protection from tech office glass while council flats lie in rubble stacks and deceased lie in the welcome mats. <laughs> Helen Hastings. Right about you <laughs> and your, her, your delicacy will soon turn in her stomach. Her words will be vomited to ricochet, sent for Don't be the poet. Don't be the poet. She will write about you. And one day soon you will be in a shopping queue, and the customer behind you will be the poet, and the customer in front of you will be the poet, and the board checkout assistant will be the poet. The whole world is filled with the poet, and to distract yourself, you will take out the first thing off the conveyor belt, which may or may not be a bag of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> the cheap telephone will rattle, rattle under your fingers, annoy a sudden life flow from this existential error. This new distortion, this distortion of you, you read the back. The word blur and refocus, blur and refocus. This is like being drunk without drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Preferably you stuck, store in a true dry place, rather night with prawns, and don't be the poet, she'll write about you. <laughs> Thank you. On the peeling green bench by the pond at the back of the park, old John sits long after dark with a four pack of cans he bought from the corner shop. He sparks a fag, takes a drag, cracks the first one, blows the froth off the top, takes a slug, then gets lost in caustic thoughts, watching the ducks crisscross the inky water, thinking about all those he has loved and fucked over. See, John was a wild one when he was young, rarely sober. Always running from himself, but going nowhere. Always trying to get higher as he sank ever lower. He played the wild rover, drank and drank till time one slower. But I could just get it tripped and quickly ran. Now he's already draining his third can. 
and you think about all the pain and hurt he caused his poor man who every time he went home, no matter how badly he had fucked up, no matter what he had said or done or stole, she would hold her dead feet, some clothes, give him a bed to sleep in, food to eat, some fresh clothes, call his dad, and both would drop him straight to the closest private rehab. And the telling him they'll be seeing him soon. And melting away then as quickly as they came as the medicine that is the sickness starts to take hold. And John is back on that park bench all alone where he can calmly face the ghost of his own life. I know that long ago some demons slit his body open, sucked out what he was meant to be and replaced it with something sick and broken and will never give it back. And he stumbles off home alone, leaving behind a mess of crumpled cans and shattered glass that lie there in the moonlight like dead bodies by the bench where John sat. First up in the final round is Jim Crittard. I was born May 6, 1992. Homosexuality was legalized in 1993. I guess that means I was an illegal baby. <laughs> you know what they say about gays. Always needing an entrance. The laws changed, but people didn't. By the time I reached 12, I knew well how to behave. I studied the hand movements of men, like steady ships tied down by their hips. And when they sat, I watched them sail into the bay of their lap. Whereas mine were pink Barbie boats that zipped around in conversation, gesticulating. As I sat with my hands clasped on my lap, they became a bone china basin held by rubber wrists, and then I turned them into ships. Each morning in the bathroom, the boy machine, the black bathroom mat, a conveyor belt, carried me along a line of lynx cans, spraying gas from their steel eyes. Combs, liquid dax wax moved over and back, over and back, until I emerged, glossy, Packaged, believable. I befriended some boys, the soccer kind, said I supported Arsenal to survive. <laughs> when really, I was watching Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Brady, Lynette, Susan, Gabrielle, and the other one. <laughs> My glass of apple juice was a white wine. As I sat, reclined, my legs crossed thigh over thigh, imagining myself in the sickest white pantsuit. But I'd deny my love for that show three times before the cock crowed. <laughs> Their approval was my heir. When I turned 16, I felt the word fabulous on my tongue. That sparkling, ridiculous word tasted like a cherry cocktail that I splashed around in conversation, announcing who I was. I flew a flag and hilarious girls encircled me protectively, their little gay president. <laughs> we laughed so hard together, moving as one, wall to wall in the school halls, an untouchable circle. Thank you. This night is done. Race past run. Mates fucked off to places far flown, but Jake is stuck staring down at a white line like he missed the pistol shot of the starting gun. Boom. The last jacks is packed. Full up with young jacked up dumb sons. It's all shaved heads and man buns, flashing all the cash that they've got to give on water bags of gummy coke mixed with baby laxative. Jakey can't afford a gap in which to live. 
Nah. So instead he waits ages and snorts up those paid wages just so he can ride the wave of a vaguely elevated state of mind. So he can talk shy, act like things are all right while all night eyeballs are all whites, blinded by the lights like mics as any tiny mild euphoric high, feeling even kinda happy or fine, sadly dies with the dwindling supply in each scabby white line. And then it's back to the club where Jake feels numb, yeah, numb, but not very young. Nah, see, because Jake is reaching 31. Well, the rest of the crowd, where they they even seem to have their leaving search done. He keeps trying to chat up young ones, but they keep running away from him. But maybe he should be the one running out of that place, yes. See, because Jake consistently says his life's a sad mess. He persistently fails to pass milestone tests. He's got many, many miles to go before he rests. Like I said, he can't afford a place of his own to lay his head. And so he just sleeps alone in his old childhood bed. He needs to go home, but just keep hoovering up that bad blow and blowing the last of his dough on eight euro points of shite innocence instead. And then it's re, re, rewind all the way back to some scholarly gap for this sad night story. And JP is out of his head, feeling shy, shortness of breath. A while ago, he snorted up a line of keck, laid him out like a racehorse under the lights at the vet. <laughs> Horse in India, pal, yeah, nice one. And Jake's night really should be done. But see, Jake, he always has to have just too much fun. He always has to stay past the last song that comes on as the gaff is winding down. And all the one shiny new cans are just grimy used ashtrays now. And all that's left are your best mates to pass that last slip around. And collectively pass out wrapped in coats, laying soft heads to rest on the cold, hard ground. But Jake, man, it's time to go home. There's no mates here to be found. Jake snaps away, and it's ten years later. He's in the bottom bunk bed, buried beneath his old Pokemon duvet, blue and red. His mates have all grown up, got new jobs and mortgages, while the weight of his age weighs him down, heavy as useless lead. He's wondering where you has fled, as in the locker next to his stupid head. He spies the crumbly white remains of another last night, turns away, shuts his eyes and sighs, wondering not for the first or indeed the last time. Is he ever, ever going to get past that starting role? Helen Hastings. I am not your border control. I am merely a human being standing at the foot of a territory in which you have never been. Allow me to introduce myself. I am not your border control. Take off your shoes. We go barefoot here. There are no storms to barb you, no sharp stones to cut you. Just a soft grind that rises, rises, rises to cut the soft, tender, aching feet. Allow me to introduce myself. I am not your border control. I will not cut you down. Come and rip at your clothes, searching for the weapon that we and you both know that we don't. Um, I will, however, ask to place a hand on your chest and feel the world that beats within you. Feel the millions of your chaoses all woven together, suddenly a sparkling, duly inspired web of your history. Allow me to introduce myself. I am not your border control. I will not ask for your passport. The laminated proof of your existence, laminated proof of your genesis, I will, however, ask that you display your proof. Your proof is the blanket that your mother wrapped you in when you were newborn, when you were nothing but a blinking rapture, a soft, skin-covered promise of hope. We marvel at this blanket softness and the lullaby it sings silently. There's a storm on the horizon. This storm is your history. I usher you across the boundary. It's hot on your heels, snapping at your throat. I tell you to follow the map within. Follow the compass, the compass that spins like a kaleidoscope at your core. 
You disappear seconds before the storm arrives. It rears up at my boundary. I hear your name being called from somewhere deep, somewhere dark within its climates. It sounds like barbed wire being trailed over something soft. Allow me to introduce myself, I say, because I'm your fucking border control. Thank you. The Undone. Let's talk about masculinity, about this male inability to recognize and identify. The underlying fragility will understand what it is to be a man. From the get go, we are swept up in this narrative, this grand scheme, this plan. An amalgamation of information derived from the etiquette of life don't be fucking crying. Don't be getting the notions to show emotions, except maybe angry and knowing you're pissed and fisted, be flying cause real men are boards that are boards and boards they will be lying. <laughs> and we're taught these rules from the very beginning. Especially in schools where the kids do be grinning with each other. Though anyone that doesn't seem to fit in, you know the pipes. The geeks, freaks, and weirdos, yet yeah, they're a bit different, but they're much easier to jeer though takes the heat off me, basically. And those who don't fit the guidelines are placed on the sidelines, outcast, outcast, the corner post of normality. And this is done with the utmost formality, sorry. Oh, I like it. She don't even follow football. And a few years pass and it's still the same game, and this rejection sticks to the into your brain for the rest of your teenage life. Puts through your confidence like a hot fucking knife all because you didn't play along. Didn't pretend like the others to be all macho and strong. No. Like art, music and skating, therefore you're picked on and given a few babies because you deserve it, you little pig, you little sap, you smelly little hippie and he hits another slap. But you're different, but you're unique, but you're challenging the norms and they perceive this as weak. Is that wrong? Yeah, it's wrong. And school doesn't last forever and life after is very long compared to that show. When every day feels like a struggle and a struggle and a fight for you see. Some lads become dads and these boys become men. And they have kids of their own and God forbid it happens to them. Hopefully their boys grow up to be a part of the team. That's the dream. Fitting in is real easy or so it would seem when you keep the head down. Like what a rule book of bullshit. With any luck they'll avoid getting stuck in that cesspool and negativity. The hegemonic, demonic, brotherhood of toxic masculinity. Because there's more to life than playing by hypothetical rules, and those who enforce these laws are just a bunch of shite bags and fools who are afraid to be themselves. Like a flock of sheep, they must keep and step with their hair, but if their man has ever questioned, you can see that they're scared because they're not you. You can be kind and be gentle and be true. But more than you do, you be you. <laughs> In third place, in the All Island Slam Poetry Final of 2022, is June Pradhan. <laughs> in second place, in the All Island Poetry Slam Final of 2022, is Helen Hayes. tell you the scores or I'm going to tell you that there's just over 0.5 in third place in Britain and the winner and we're seeking a cash prize 150 euros <laughs> Receiving this amazing trophy from the uh, current all Ireland champion Shauna, Sh Shauna Lee Lynch is Leon Dunn. <laughs> Thank you.
and I started the audience to start gigging um, only this year and uh, I fell in love with it. I met a lot of amazing people through this entire thing. Um, I got addicted, addicted to it. And the best part about it wasn't just about performing, but about getting to meet all these incredibly talented people. Um, there were a lot of them were in this room and I get to meet, you know, I hope to continue to meet more and talented people that share the story of life. I feel like I won't miss the universe or something. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I'm shaking my hands here. I don't know what to do. I'm just shaking my hands. Um, I, wrote, I wrote this poem uh, only recently, um, and it's a tribute to all the people that I've met all over the world. Hey, Jack. 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 Hey, the quiet ones, the letters, the local legends and forest climbers, musicians, singers, and the occasional sounds of violence. <laughs> Each one's different, but all share a similar theme, capturing life's experiences and molding them into the creative stream of conscious effort. But if we were all caterpillars, then performance spaces like these are a cocoon, a place where you can build your craft and confidence until they're ready to fall out of the womb, dressed and ready for battle. You see, creative minds are blind without their art. It helps make sense of the profound, chaotic world around them. Whether it be through a song, a poem, a joke, or a dancer, book, play, a paint, you just have to take that chance. Me and the net shall appear, they say. Just as long as you're doing your thing in your own wonderful, unique way. And regardless of chosen modality, we all share this commonality, a compulsion to create a piece of infinity within our own mortality. Capture moments like butterflies. And then mold them into something beautiful before your very eyes, and metamorphosize into something great. And the strive of ours comes from somewhere deep. From that place where you forget to eat, even sometimes fall go to sleep. In the very core of your being, the fibres of your essence, each a lesson of individuality, a statement that I am here and I exist, and I will turn my joy, hardship, and pain into a temporary moment of creative bliss. Whose power truly lies in this pulling something from the ether. From the head to the page, and the next step then is to take to that stage where you shall rage, rage, and rage. Oh, fuck you, you're just writing beside a little palm or something. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>